Okay, thank you all for coming. So today what we're gonna be doing is we're talking about something that we call the Next UI Toolkit. Um, so this is actually a toolkit that we use to create visualizations for topologies. And uh, you can do it in HTML5, JavaScript. So it's a library that we wrote. Um, you know, just as news, we're looking at releasing the SDK so all of you can use it in your own apps. And then we're considering whether to go open source on it so we could use your feedback to say, is the SDK, would this be useful to you? If we went open source, would that be useful to you? So uh, you can kind of keep your thoughts in there as we go along. So uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Edwin, who is our uh, lead designer for Next. So since it's all about user experience and software, uh, he's been doing the design aspects, and we'll go through that. And then we also have Abu, who is our key software coder. So if we have questions that come up on the software side, then Abu is uh, the primary author here of Next. So um, in terms of uh, some of the things, you know, what is Next? So Next, uh, you know, in terms of the acronym, it's the user experience embedded in networking. So often when we uh, you know, look at networking, we're used to using you know, CLI interfaces, or we have different management applications that have been built on top of you know, the network. Um, but you know, as we get to this next phase, we believe that there's much more that can be done by providing broader visualizations of what's going on in the network and allowing broader control as well. So you could imagine that you have all of your network elements you have some kind of controllers like APIC-EM or Open Daylight or you know, different solutions that bring some of the information together. And then next would be a visualization tool that you could use on top of it to show that network information. It's uh, written in HTML5 and JavaScript so that you can write web applications uh, for showing these network topologies. The key thing about um, the web applications, it's not just very simply creating a web page. Right? So when you want to do very complex things like showing network topologies, clicking here, showing more information, diving in, connecting to an actual live running network uh, or an SDN solution, you want to write a deeper web application as opposed to just a web page. And that's where you need some more powerful uh, JavaScript type tools as what we have here. And this is a toolkit that helps you do some of that. Um, some of the advantages of the Next UI Toolkit is first, we had a very much of an experience-driven development where we started with our user experience designer to think about what we need to show people. Um, we have visual interaction designs that are focused on really creating these more intuitive network experiences. Um, again, as I said before, we're making it very easy for people to build network web applications. Um, and then we leverage a lot of the language concepts that are used in other programming la languages JavaScript doesn't have a lot of programming structure uh, in it, as many of you know. Uh, so when you want to create a complex application, then it doesn't have many of those structures. So we actually have uh, a next core library that helps you introduce some of that concept um, structure. And then uh, in addition, there's a topology component that has very rich APIs to let you visualize topologies, show network paths and information and overlay information. Uh, and so that's kind of our, our key areas. We're going to dive right into the experience design, and uh, Edwin is going to jump in here to discuss. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as some of you may uh, play with other visualization tools, like D3, you have some topology visualization tools and other open source open uh, visualization tools. I think one thing here is we focus on the network-related scenarios. So we have four areas offer. One is uh, about the uh, building blockers. So we have all network-related icons. Um, and all, all the, um, most of the objects are covering for your daily operations relates. The second one is we have some predefined design patterns. Uh, it can use, some of them can be used in the 3D visualization of your network. Some of them can be used for the echo management. So it's also tied into your daily network-related scenario. And the third one is we adding some smartness into this visualization tools. So it's not just pulling the page for you to visualize, uh, for you to look. It's also adding the smartness for you to interact more easily. And the last part is uh, the style is customizable. You can use our predefined style sheets. You can add your own style uh, style theme according to your company. So it's these main four areas. And I will just go through some of them. Uh, the first one is. Uh, just to show that a network composed of the nodes and links and the groups. 
So you can, you know, show in your network object as a node and some of them as one group and the network connections as a links. So it's really a simple visualization of the network structure. And also um, for, the no for the links, you might have different type of the links. You have multi-links links between two objects, or you have curved links, you have uh, straight line links, so it's all customizable according to different use cases. For some of the paths, you want to show that uh, you, uh, indirect paths, or you want to show a hop-by-hop -hop path, or in other case, you may have you know, two upstream, uh, upstream of this case, and also downstream of this path. So it's like a two, diagonal, uh, two direction arrows to indicating the different traffic on one path. Also for each devices, how to show the interfaces and how for you to configure and interact with the interfaces. Uh, this one is some basic interaction. You can select the particular objects and several objects and customize your operations onto it. Also, this one is shown, um, we can show the topology in different layout on, the, on top of the map of physical location. And also to virtualize it as a ring map or based on the device role. You have uh, the edge router, you have the uh, core distribution and access devices. So it's all predefined layout algorithm integrated in the system. Uh, this one is showing once you have a large area of the network, you have a lot of devices, it can be aggregated into different groups. And according to your interaction needs, you can have a different ac uh, actions defined relates to each mouse operation. And this is just one example of uh, expand and collapse the groups. Here is showing like uh, you have L2, L3, or different layer of the network. You can overlay them together and showing a 3D view. And some of the modules we have like uh, echo view lighters, another echo view lighter, also the application container for you to load different application modules into one application. You can see here is uh, Echo, BGP, OpenFlow, different modules. Um, one thing here is relates to what we talked about, adding some situation awareness to the system. So if you'll notice, uh, the label of the center one is keep jumping to different positions just to avoid occlusion with the lines. So it's a very small feature, but if you have a very large network, these small benefits can make your visualization totally different. And here is also showing once you zoom out the, the view, if system detected the icon is going to overlap with each other, that will be shrink to a smaller size. Like here is a full size icon, and then it is shrink to a smaller size. So it's all customized the display. And also we support the bootstream themes and your customized themes. So that's. Um, a quick glance of from the experience side what is included in this next UI toolkit. If no more questions, I'm gonna play one of the quick video of. Um So this is actually some um, screenshots on how we use Next in different applications, like Open Daylight, uh, like uh, Epic EM, etc.
So just one last word. It's really a, a UI toolkit tied into a network day-to-day -day scenario. Make your network application really easy to use. Check it out on our learning lab. We have some of the module. Thank you, Edwin. So, um, so what you saw was uh, Next being used. You've probably seen this in the floor in some of the demos that have been out around here because uh, Cisco's using it, you know, again, as uh, showing the topology for some of the apps that are built on top of Open Daylight, using it in APIC EM, using it in the WAN automation engine. So this actually showed that same topology library that Edwin just showed the design for uh, in those different applications. Um, in terms of some of the software itself, uh, there's actually two components to the Next uh, UI toolkit. So one is that I told you there's this base Next framework, which is a JavaScript engine, which actually helps uh, bring some structure to how you code in JavaScript. Uh, and then on top of it is the Next topology, which provides the different visuals that you saw you know, on top. So in terms of the Next framework itself, there's a number of, uh, of advantages that it gives you. So first of all, it uh, helps to provide some object-oriented programming. So it gives you some, uh, so that you can actually code that way to build up your structures. Uh, it uses something called a view model and model view coding, um, in which uh, this is actually something that comes from WPF, you know, from Microsoft WPF, which lets you separate the presentation layer from the business logic layer of what you're building. Um, there's a high-performance view engine. Uh, there's ways that we actually uh, help to create this web application support, so you can write web apps, and then doing some enhancements to JavaScript. So again, that's some of the structural advantages that we're providing through our uh, Next Framework uh, JavaScript toolkit. On top of that is the Next topology itself. And that gives you the different visuals that you just saw. So in uh, you know, one key, as you saw from the design, it was really designed for networking. Right? It's not like it's a general graphics visualization engine that was then applied to networking. It was actually designed for networking from those applications to build the features in to see what people needed to see. Uh, we focused on the user experience, uh, having a lot of features with a rich set of APIs, uh, focusing on networking visualization, and then it has some Cisco branding, but then it allows you to just change the different themes so that you can actually make it your own. Um, in terms of the toolkit itself, as I said, there's a JavaScript core, which gives you those really uh, basic uh, software uh, capabilities, ad adding the object-oriented programming, the MVVM, and the data binding. On top of that, there's a core UI engine that lets you put in different UI components, gives you a view engine, and has application support. And then on top of that is the topology component itself. Um, a lot of people want to use Bootstrap, you know, in terms of some of the apps that they're writing. So we've actually added Bootstrap themes so that you can still use your Bootstrap and embed this topology component within your app overall. Um, you know, when you're when you're in Next itself, uh, you know, as I mentioned. In terms of the next framework, JavaScript is flexible, but sometimes the language is too weak. So these extensions help you in terms of making it more powerful. And then the web apps are the ones that are becoming more complicated, so the structures help with that as well. Uh, and then also, there's compatibility issues across browsers. So we've had to do some work in the framework to help uh, overcome some of that. Um, now for the next topology itself, just to quickly uh, show a little bit, you know, there's a number of features that we have in the topology itself. So, first of all, there's the topology, the basic um, graph visualization, you know, so that you could actually view the nodes, as well as interaction. So it's not just for viewing, but also allowing you to click on elements, move elements around, and manipulate them. You know, uh, there's uh, multiple layouts uh, ordered, which Edwin just talked about which is when you're viewing your network, then oftentimes you want different views. Sometimes you're going to want to have an enterprise networking view. Sometimes you just want to spread out the nodes using something like a forced layout algorithm, right, just to spread things apart. Sometimes you want to be hierarchical in terms of, you know, your core, your distribution, and your endpoints. Uh, in addition, when you have very large numbers of network nodes, you know, one thing that you want to do is, you know, our, our networks are very complex and sometimes very large, but an operator can't really see them all at once. So what you need is a way to kind of aggregate and deaggregate. So that was our approach to overcome some of the scaling issues with how to view large networks. Um, just so you know, one choice that we made is you can get into kind of uh, fancier libraries where you want to display 5,000 or 10,000 nodes. 
we decided not to go that way because it could make very cool looking things, but there's very little you can do at that level. So our sweet spot is at about um, 500 nodes, 200 to 500 nodes, you know, in, in less. And then our I, idea is as you get bigger than that, you want to aggregate because there are certain things that you want to see and manipulate in others. So we're at about that sweet spot there. Um, uh, in addition, there's ways to view paths, so to draw paths through the network, uh, to show network traffic, to set up tunnels, like traffic engineering tunnels and service provider networks, um, and then to visualize using groups as you want to you know, group different uh, network nodes according to geography, according to network type, uh, element type, whether it's a wireless access point versus a network router. You could actually um, add uh, other icons like if you wanted to overlay a collaboration network, you could add a unified communication manager and you know telepresence MCUs and things like that onto here as well. Um, we have a built-in map overlay so that you could look at you know a world map or a US map and so on. So you could lay these your network accordingly. Um, there's actually a built-in interaction behaviors. So you can you know drag, zoom, click, select, aggregate. So these are all types of things that you can uh, use to interact very naturally. Um, and then there's um, different icons that are built in, you know, again, showing things like network routers and different themes that Edwin showed. But in addition, you could add your own icons to extend it. You know, again, if you wanted to build that collaboration network, you might put, you know, voice over IP phones, telepresent endpoints, as well as uh, central materials. Uh, we've actually used it for Internet of Things technologies as well to show overlays of sensors and things. There's a co-create demo out in the front which is actually showing uh, an IoT network you know, with trains and so on using Next Framework as well. Uh, and then there's also a built-in kind of tooltip manager and uh, layout manager. What you can do is like hover over nodes and then show information. What you saw in one of the cases, you could hover over an area, put up a, command, uh, put up a window that goes into the CLI of that router itself if you wanted to go and dive in deeper as well. Um, so if we look at kind of the, uh, the architecture of the topology overall, you know, what we have is a number of graph features you know, that are actually letting you do things like have vertexes and edges, sets of vertexes, sets of edges uh, that will allow you to do some of these basics. Uh, this is actually has a basic graphic component and it's built in SVG. And uh, you know, what that does, some people would want to use Canvas you know, versus SVG. Canvas gets you maybe more uh, kind of deeper and higher performance if you wanted to show 5,000 or 10,000 nodes. We chose to use SVG so we'd have more flexibility in some of the things that we can show, but the sweet spot ends up being about 200 to 500 nodes. Um, and then above that we have the topology, and these are the types of elements. So remember we can use an object-oriented type of nature to program it, but you can specify groups, links, uh, link sets, sets of links, and then the nodes themselves, sets of nodes together, and then draw paths across them. Okay, So those are all the basic elements that are brought together. And then you put them together into a scene. And then you can overlay information using the tooltip manager. You can change the different layouts that we talked about using the layout manager. Uh, and then have different UI components if you wanted to put in uh, different customizations there as well. Uh, when you come down to doing things like uh, initializing a basic topology, it ends up being uh, pretty straightforward, is that you actually have your topology data that you can actually load in, and then you end up doing things like uh, simple JavaScript to initialize a topology. So topo equals a new NX, you know, N NX is the next library, a next graphic with topology, specify the width and height of the window, you know, the configuration of the nodes and the types of labels that you want onto there, and then topo.data, that's where you associate the topology data itself into this view and then attach them to then view it. So um, you, you, know, you can do your basic uh, topology initialization. Then what you can do is use some of the, um, configure it to actually, for example, display it onto a map. And here's where you would actually add additional information, like I want to use a US map and add things like longitudinal and latitudinal data for how you can actually take the nodes and show them across there as well. Um, and then you can do things like show a path overlaid on top of these links. Uh, and then that would just be a matter of you know, changing the feature of the links to then you know, show it green, to show it bold, and things like that. 
So these are the things that, these are the ways that you can program and show these different types of visualizations. Um, here what I'm gonna do is show you a video. You saw some of the applications built. This is actually just showing some of the UI primitives and the types of movements that you can make on the topology itself. Uh, and so we can show this as we go. And so, so here just shows that you can actually interact and move the nodes around. You can be zooming in, zooming out, select the whole area and move it around. like we're frozen. There we go. So and here's where we have the various nodes. So we're zooming in and out. And then you see the sizes of the labels as Edwin explained, they're changing in terms of what it shows as it zooms in and zooms out. And again, these are all things that you could code, but why not have the toolkit do it for you so you can work on top of it and just use these features. Um, here we're going to show some of the uh, expansion, the aggregation features. So you can aggregate nodes together and expand them as well. And the way that the layout is being done is, uh, is automatic, is how you specify that. And then here we show some of the traffic on top of a map as you're overlaying this onto the map. can move Seattle. I guess you wouldn't do that in real life, but. <laughs> and then here we have elements so that you can show different amounts of traffic, you know, your uh, inbound and outbound traffic to see, are you red, are you green, and how are you doing there? This shows you some of the different uh, layers of the network, core distribution and access. Here's a, you know, more of a forced layout. Here we're showing by hierarchy. And here we just showed adding in your own icons. Okay, so you can add different types of icons select different areas, you know, move them in, and you see that the uh, links and the labels had adapted accordingly as you switched sizes. Um, we also have a mode where you can actually edit as well. So if you wanted to add, mode, add nodes as you are going, then uh, that's what this does here. And uh, remove nodes as well. So uh, that shows you the toolkit in action. With a short um, time, we couldn't go into all the details, but it's available in the learning labs, and uh, we'll have more of it available online. Uh, some of the keys here. Oh, OK. One of my slides. Oh, here we go. Uh, so so uh, the way that we've had the toolkit out there is so far, we've developed Next over the last couple of years, and we've had it used internally for Cisco apps. Um, what we're doing now is making the Next SDK available. Um, do you guys think the SDK would be available so you can write your own network apps using this? Is this of interest for you to use the Next SDK? Um, and then I guess a question, something that we're considering is to actually open source the toolkit. Again, you can still do all these things with the SDK because you can just build on top of it. Um, would you be, would there be interest in actually open sourcing the toolkit itself so you can develop in the toolkit? Or is it more useful to at least just have the SDK? Any thoughts there? Yes, exactly. Great. OK. Uh, so what he said was that he's a UC guy, so he'd want to use this to visualize call flows and you know more of the UC elements into there. So he'd want it either open sourced or at least have the ability to be able to customize it to do everything he wanted to see call flows. So um, OK. Well, I think that we're actually at the end of the session. Do we have time for questions or no? No? Uh, Abu and Edwin uh, are going to be right here. I have to run and give another talk. But uh, again, Abu is the chief software architect and the key developer behind this. Edwin's the key designer. Uh, we're all going to be here all week. So give us your inputs as to what directions you would like to see this toolkit go. What was that?
Uh, the SDK is going to be made available on the DevNet site at developer.cisco.com. So we should have it up there by the end of the week, I would think. So it's already up there? It's already up there. So you can go to developer.cisco.com to then get this. Okay, we'll make it more obvious. Yes. Great. Thank you very much, everybody.